Hey, Eric, how are you? I'm doing good, that teacher. How about you? I'm doing pretty good, man. Pretty good. I, a nice weekend. Uh, I think maybe like many people, always we have activities around the house that never finish, that always you have to do something in the house. But yes, you know, I think it's, it's I, I, I don't know in your house, but I think in our, in the house, uh, men always have to fix something, repair something, paint. Uh, I, I don't know, do, do something. And, and the women always complain that they always have to clean or wash or something. And it's like the two, the two groups, we yeah. never finish. <laughs> we never finish. You're right. No. Yes. Uh, Eric, are you married? Yes, I'm married. Okay. And does your I've wife... I've been married for uh, 26 years. 26 years? 26 years, yes. Oh, wow. Wow, that's and a long time. Mm -hmm. One more thing, to be honest. Let me tell you a secret. Tell me, Eric. So at my house for eight days. I've been stuck in my house for eight days, and I'm kind of bored. Well, not really, because I love to be in house. But I've been, but I'm isolated in my room. I did the COVID test mm -hmm. uh, last Sunday, and I and I was positive. It's supposed I was positive, but I feel okay. I don't have a temperature. I don't have a colds. I don't have a, a body aches. I, I don't have sore throats or some th those kind of issues. It's supposed I'm I have in my body the COVID nineteen, but I'm okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna be free. Uh, from my house in uh, seven days, so it means that I'm gonna be spend all the weeks, all all the week, uh, stuck in my room again. You are asymptomatic. Yes, it's post. Mm -hmm. But I I wanna run some tests. Those tests that the doctor Barriento said that it says something like she 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 doesn't trust in those kind of exams. So. Those we the stick with the cotton, the the one that put on the, in your mouth or, or your nose because they say they they're not something like practical practicably or something like that. So it's better to make some uh, blue test in in order to know if you or if you have or, or not the disease. But I I don't know if in El Salvador they have the the test for antibodies in the blood. Well. She, she, uh, she. Uh, I saw a video, and I tried to call to call her mm -hmm. and get some uh, an appointment in order to have a. And let's see, maybe she could she could attend me, but I, I'm trying to get some tests, the one that she said on the videos. Mm -hmm. And then I'm trying. Then, then I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna call her and try to find out if I had or not the the the. Virus. Okay. Okay. Well, at least I spend a week in my house now. But don't worry, you can be infected because you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. <laughs> this is a, this is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, my my wife was she was sick, um, and she was sick for more than a month. She had two times she had to do the test. Oh, really? And the first time, yeah, but she had symptoms. She had the fever, and she had, you know, she had medical problems. And then, uh, she. After 15 days, she was still sick. And so then maybe three weeks later, they yeah. had to do a test again, and she was still sick, and they had to do another treatment. And, you know, now, like two months later, finally mm -hmm. she recovered. But I, and for this, okay. I don't, yeah. yeah, for this, I know that the family is asymptomatic because I don't need the test because, oh, really? yes, because we were exposed to her because be, she was sick before we did the yeah. exam and she, she in the house, she didn't use the mask. She wasn't isolated. Me, we slept in the yeah. same room. I took care of her. We did all of the things and the children hugged her and stuff. And yeah. I, the first days, because we didn't know she was infected and nobody got sick. So yeah, it's similar to case. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's similar to my case because we are three in the family right now, my, my wife and, and, and me. And the three of us, went, we went to, the, to, the, to take the exam. And mm -hmm. I was the only one who got, got that positive. So that's why I decided to stuck in my house. And 
I'm sleeping alone. This is my caveman right yeah. now for 15 days. Man cave, man cave. <laughs> Ma yeah, man, man cave, yes. <laughs> it's nice. A little bit, Just a little bit. For the English class. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the good thing about these things, uh, I don't know the others, but is because technically you are sick. So for, the, for example, the other person, yeah your wife or your husband, the other person is responsible to take care of you. So technically you don't do anything and you yes. just wait for your food, yeah, <laughs> you relax. You're right, because I don't go out, I yeah. don't do anything. I just, here in my room, yeah. waiting but, for food, watching TV, listening to music, yeah. and reading something, you know? <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's kind of fun. Yeah. But I can go out. That's the bad part. That's the bad part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I see we have a couple other people here. Um, amazingly, Eric, you're the only man in class today. Everybody else is a woman. It's, the, oh, you know, really? really. And which is amazing because I have noticed that more and more women are learning English compared to men. In, in my classes in the last couple of months, oh. since uh, in the, maybe not the last couple of months, in the last year, the last two years, almost always is two women for one man in a class some classes even more, but it's amazing that more yeah. women are getting more education. They are taking advantages. Yeah, they should, everybody should. It's, it's a great, hopefully, hopefully we'll get a couple ideas and yeah. which, is, which is really good because today we're gonna be looking at some vocabulary that describes different things such as this. Okay. Um, some of the vocabulary we're gonna wrap up so that we can wrap up unit three is here. Um, I don't know if you are, if it's big enough, can everybody see the vocabulary? Yes. Yes? Okay, great. If you want to look it's in the cute. platform, it's 3.9. In case you want to look in the platform, 3.9. And let me, let me put, let me take a picture and put into the WhatsApp before I forget, because sometimes some people don't have the access and they can look later, okay? We have several words like an assumption, a criticism, a demand, an excuse, a prediction, a suggestion, a suspicion, and a warning. Do you know what these words mean? Do you know what they are? At least I have an idea. Okay. Okay, let's try to, let's try to match some statements to what would be the, re, what is the reaction. So, as an example, letter A says, if you do it again, you'll have to find a new girlfriend. What is this? What do you think a this warning? is? A warning? A warning. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh, Andrea, it sounds like you have said this before. Mm, Andrea said it with a, no, little, a lot of words. No. If, mm, a warning. Mm, okay, Andrea. <laughs> Especially for Andrea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. What about letter B? I bet you were out with another woman. What do you think that would be? Mm, a suspicion or assumption? I don't know. Probably, yeah, it could be both of them. In this case, I think it would be more a suspicion, right? Because you're, 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 you're thinking, you're, you're, you're making a conclusion from this information. Mm -hmm. What about for, you can, you can be so inconsiderate. A criticism? A criticism? Yeah, a criticism. You're telling somebody something negative, right? Even though today, uh, now we're supposed to use positive criticism, right? What the person did well and how they did it, but still a criticism. Ah, letter D. You'll probably forget our anniversary too. Prediction, maybe? Prediction. Maybe. Maybe had a prediction. Okay. Maybe a prediction. Hmm. What about letter E? Now you have to take me out for dinner twice. A demand? A demand. Ah, who said that? Andrea, I bet. I bet Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's the one. That's the one. Exactly. Uh huh. And not only once, now it's two times. <laughs> that way they learn. <laughs> okay. Letter F, you must have wanted to break up with me. 
An assumption. An assumption. Yeah, probably that would probably be the best one for the assumption. Mm -hmm. uh, letter G, you know, you ought to buy me flowers. Suggestion. Suggestion. Yeah, definitely a suggestion. Yeah. yeah, it's a nice way to make a suggestion. Instead of saying buy me flowers, yeah, it's a nice mm -hmm. one. You ought, you ought to. You could. Yeah. And the last one, it's okay. You must feel really sorry. An excuse. It's an excuse. Yeah. Because you're, okay. Probably an excuse for the person. Also, it could be maybe an assumption. You, you assume the person feels sorry also. Right? These are sometimes a little bit of the ideas of what we have. Now, all of these words are normally, it's not that we use them in the context. They're just the reactions. The reactions are how we describe it. If somebody's assuming or criticizing, and the reason is is because in exercise three point ten, we have to decide, okay, what it is that statement, and we decide what it is that they are saying. Is it an assumption, a criticism, different things like this, okay? Now, before we continue with three point ten, um, I'm curious: has anybody uh, finished unit three or is up to? This, um, ah, Maria, I see her raising her hand. I think Marcela moved her head. I don't know. Anybody else? Yes? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Ah, Ruth also. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay. So that helps because then we, I understand that most of you already understood the vocabulary and it's clear. So we don't have to do it. Um, there is a part of the reading. We are going to do the reading, not because you haven't done it, but so that we can work on pronunciation. That's the main idea for the reading, okay? The first part is I'm going to read it so that you can hear the correct words, pronunciation. And if you have any words that you want me to repeat or words that you don't know what they mean, you ask me. Then we're going to make small groups and we're going to practice reading different paragraphs. But first, just listen to me read. If there is a word that you don't know what it means or you are not sure about the pronunciation, then you ask me at the end. Okay, you ready? Okay. The blue lights of Silver Cliff. Look at the picture. What do you think the blue lights are? Today, the town of Silver Cliff, Colorado has a population of only 100 people once. However, it was a prosperous mining town where thousands came with dreams of finding silver and making their fortune. Late one night in 1880, a group of miners were headed back to their camp after a good time in the town. They were still laughing and joking as they approached the graveyard on a hill outside Silver Cliff. Then one of the men yelled and pointed towards the graveyard. The others fell silent. On top of each grave they saw flame-like blue lights. These eerie lights seem to be dancing on the graves, disappearing and then appearing again. This was the first sighting of the blue lights of Silver Cliff. There have been many other sightings over the years. In 1969, Edward Linham from National Geographic's magazine visited the graveyard. Uh, Linham's articles tells of the experience. I saw them, dim, round spots of blue-white light glowed etherly among the graves. I stepped forward for a better look. They vanished. I aimed my flashlight at one eerie glow and switched it on. It revealed only a tombstone. Linham and others have suggested various explanations for the lights. The lights might have been a reflection of lights from the town, but Silver Cliff's lights seemed too dim to have this effect. They could have been caused by radioactive ore, though there's no evidence of radioactivity. They may also have been caused by gases from rotting matter. This usually happens in swaps, however, and the area around Silver Cliff is dry. Or perhaps the lights are from the helmet of dead miners wandering the hills in search of their fortune. Okay. Are there any words you, that you don't know what they mean or any words that you would like me to uh, pronunciate once again? Eerie. What is that? Eerie. Eerie is kind of a, a synonym of scary. Mm -hmm. 
iwi klo. That's right. So it's not just uh, like a like an angel is a pretty glow. If you see an angel, like in the movies, it looks like ah very nice and beautiful. But when you see a ghost or a phantom, it's an eerie glow. It's something that ah, maybe it's a dark a dark glow or something like this that scares you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What is Tom? Um, tombstone. tombstone. Tombstone uh, is, mm -hmm. is what is what you see in the picture. This piece of, uh, of rock oh. that, or where mm -hmm. they put the name, that is called the tombstone. Oh, okay. And helmets. Helmet is right here. Um, well, no, they're using hats. But think of the helmets of the people that ride motorcycles. People that have motorcycles. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I happen to have a helmet there, so it was lucky. <laughs> Any other words? Don't be shy. It's okay. Dim. Dim. Um, I don't have a way to make my lights dim, but it's like when the light is soft, we would say in Spanish, it's, it's not strong. It, it goes little by little by little. Mm, I think the best way to think about it is like in your cell phone. I don't know if your cell phone is similar to mine, that you can have the, the idea of choosing the type of light that you have. You can have it very strong or a little strong. On the screen. No, if, in, in the flashlight, ah. in the flashlight, you can have it, uh, but also in the screen, you're right, also in the screen, you can also have it dim where it, you make it a little bit lighter. So this is strong, but then it, you can see it blocks you, but then mm -hmm. you can have it dim. Mm. That would be the dim. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. No. Any other words? What is, um, I don't know the pronunciation. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it correct. Swamp. Oh. Swamp. Oh, swamp. Swamp. What is that? We don't really have one in El Salvador, but the best way, <laughs> best way to think about it would be like an estero where there's a lot of water and um, grass. Maybe you watched in the TV, um, these crocodile hunters or alligator hunters, where they kill the crocodiles, that, because the crocodiles live in the swamps. They live in a place with a lot of water and some land. Is that okay? It's like, mm -hmm. it's fun, like pantano. pantano. That's right. That That's exactly, uh -huh. that's why I say we don't really have one, but. The closest we have is the estero, but that's right. That's the swamp. Estero. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I already understand. Anybody else? One word that I have is uh, etherly, or er er I guess. Ah, it, it's seeming like realistic, e etherly. Etherly. Mm -hmm. Because it's like really, it, it seems like something very, uh, very realistic or uh, out of this world. Mm -hmm. Flame like. Mm -hmm. If you, when you have a cigarette, you need to put a, mm -hmm. a match or a lighter. Yeah. The fire is the flame. So the flame like, it, it looks like a flame. It's like this appearance, like in the candle. In the candle is okay. the top where the fire is, is flame like. Okay. One more. Like. Or. Sorry, Eric, which I guess word? It's, uh, or. O -R -E. O -R -E. O -R -E. Correct, O-R-E. O-R-E is um, the type, is metal. So any type of metal, like they have gold ore or silver ore or ore is just in reference to say another word of metal. 
Claro. Uh -huh. so, okay. so when the people look for silver, they look for silver ore. If they look for gold, they look for gold ore. Or platinum ore. It could be also like iron ore. Iron ore, exactly. It's ore is just another way to, to use or to say the material. This this rock. The silver rock okay. or the metal rock or the gold rock. This is the idea ore. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Teacher, good evening. Good evening, uh, Roxanne. Uh, graveyard. I don't know if you already said that. No, no, no. We only said uh, tombstone. Tombstone are the rocks. Tombstones yeah. are the rocks. And graveyard is where all of the rocks are. Okay. Usually, the graveyard is, a, I guess, technically, it's different than a cemetery. But in reality, you can think of it. A cemetery is a graveyard. Graveyard. Where the, all of the bodies are buried or uh, all when you go for November 2nd? The people in El Salvador go to the graveyard. By by the way, by the way, that day will be on Monday. We will have a class or not? Um, by that time, uh, hopefully, everybody would be registered because we finish class in next Thursday, and then usually there's a week for everybody to register. So I think that's right in the week, the one or two weeks for everybody to register. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I think everybody saw the what's up, right? The faster you register, the less time we have to wait. The longer everybody registers, the longer we have to wait. All of the other words are okay? Mm -hmm. I think so. <laughs> Flame like. Flame like Eric asked this word, so Eric can oh, explain. No, 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 don't worry. It's a great opportunity for Eric to practice the explanation. Go ahead, Eric. <laughs> okay. Uh, Roxana, for example, when you said that if you had a cigarette, if you want to, let's say, turn on the cigarette, you use a, a match. So uh, the you use. To turn on the cigarette, it, it is a flame. It comes out as a flame, but at the top of the flame, it's called a flame light because it's something like moving or appearing and disappearing. But it, it, it is a, a flame, it's fire <clears throat> or light. Hello? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Did you understand, Roxy? Do you have an idea, at least? <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's like, uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Give, me I'm sorry. Give me one the second, guys. I'll be, get it. It will be something like llamarada, maybe. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, yeah, that's like it. A, a lighter oh. that is come from a candle that it moves from, from one side to side. And oh, that is the idea. Correct. Thank you. Everybody else is okay? The other one is uh, heels. Heels in the picture? In, in, the, in the picture, in the background? Okay. Those are the hills. Not volcanoes, but you know, they, they're not as big. They're not like mountains. They're a little bit smaller, but those are hills. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. They said, what about shine? Shine? I think. Sighting. Or, or sighting. Shining. Shining. This word right here? Look. Is, is that the word? Yes, okay. Sighting. Sighting? Yes, yes, sight. Okay. Is when the, you observe or you see. So sometimes they people say, oh, I saw a UFO or I saw an alien. 
I think this is a sighting is that they observed. Okay. Okay, teacher. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay. So, if there are no other questions, and we'll make sure we'll take, hang on, we'll go back here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a group or we're gonna, with our partners, we're gonna read it one more time and we want to answer the six questions and make sure it's clear. Some of you already answered them, some of you haven't, but the most important is the reading. We're gonna have um, 10 minutes to read and answer the questions, okay? So that way we don't take too much time. 10 minutes to read and answer the six questions. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, good. I think everybody got the vocabulary, so we're, we can go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. Heidi, are you having some problems? Hey, Maria. I was alone. Yeah, I, I'm waiting for it. Supposedly Heidi is in your group, but I think she's just taking a little bit longer to join. I think she just joined. Mm -hmm. Okay. Heidi, is everything okay? Yeah, yeah, but I okay. try. Yes, okay, no problem. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's it, the, the internet. Do mm -hmm. you know, Heidi, if, if you have a slow internet or problem with the internet, turn off the camera. If you turn off the camera, it's faster because it doesn't use so much internet, only the voice. Ah, okay. Uh-huh because it's black, it, it, well, for me, yes. I, I see black anyways, right, Maria? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah so, uh -huh. mm -hmm. so if you, if, if it's black, yes. And I think this it, it, it'll okay. make, is going to make it easier for your internet. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, I'll let you guys read. Okay. okay. Do you want to begin? Yes, it is. Now we have to read. Um, okay. okay. Maybe one for each paragraph. Yeah. Okay, maybe okay. Morena, do you want to start? It's okay. Go. And then Daniel, you have it? Continue the second. Okay. I start. Okay. Have it, Daniel. Okay, well, I think that it will be good also to practice. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, the first one. So, today the town of Silver Cliff, Colorado, has a population of only 100 people. Once, however, it was a prosperous, how is this word, mining, mining town, where thousands came with dreams of finding silver and making their fortune. among the graves. I stepped forward for a better look. They vanished, they, they vanish. I aimed my, fla my flashlight at one eerie glow and switched it on. It revealed only a tombstone. Okay. Uh, uh, line, line, 
and other have suggested various explanations for the light. The light might have been reflection of light from the town, but silver clip light seemed to them to have this effect. They could have been caused by radioactive or um, so there is no ev evidence of radio radioactivity. They may also have been caused. Okay, um, I'm gonna start. Um, today, the town of Silver Cliff, Colorado, has a population of only 100 people. Once, however, already in a, and I already uh, did the um, the midterm exam. Okay, in my case, I have been problems because I, I used to use my cell phone, but right now I can't use my cell phone. I don't know why the problem. Only use uh, I can use the platform only with computer. Uh huh. No, I I use the cell phone for the class, and and I'm on the computer. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Abner. Okay. Hello, teacher. Hello, Abner. Remember tomorrow, send Jonathan an email, or 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 if you have WhatsApp, send Jonathan a WhatsApp. If um because if you have problems accessing the the platform on that cell phone. Uh, Maybe something uh, Jonathan can help you walk through or update or, or something. Okay, uh, the last week I sent uh, Jonathan a, a, a message, but he told me uh, everything is, is okay, but... But it's he, not okay. <laughs> but it's not okay. <laughs> okay. Mm. Uh, and okay. what kind, what kind okay. of... Okay, we try. But you are, do you have a computer? You can work on a computer. Or no? Uh, right now, I am using a computer, and when I use the computer, I don't have any problem. Okay, maybe only that's with, only with my cell phone. That's going to have to be the the way to use for now. Okay, <laughs> thank you, teacher. Yeah, Miriam, you were going to make a suggestion. Maybe. No, maybe it's the cell phone. Maybe. Maybe. Mm hmm. But but uh, the last the last course I used to use my cell phone. I don't know where is the problem right now. Ah, it's for the updates. Sometimes the problems are the updates on the cell phones. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. Okay. okay, I'll let you practice. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, teacher. Thank you. You're welcome. Andrea, what happened? I was. I was the only one in my in the small group. Uh, really? Yeah. Okay, no problem. Let me send you to another group then. Yeah, maybe, thank maybe, you. You're welcome. Maybe your partner had some kind of problem. Yeah, probably. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna start. Yes. Okay. Uh, the blue lights, I don't see the whole topic. Yeah. So I'm gonna start with the paragraph. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, today, that's better. The, yeah, that's Senia, better. Are you on your WhatsApp or are you on the cell phone? It, yeah, it's on the cell phone and Eric too, so I don't, I don't see the, okay. the whole paragraph. Don't worry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture and put into the WhatsApp. Maybe that'll make it easier for you. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, I'm going to take like uh, two parts. That way it's easier for you to, you have to read uh, the two pictures, but it'll make it easier. I'll make a big one and then you only zoom. Okay. Okay. Maybe that, that can help you. Take a look and let me know. If not, I take more pictures to make it easier. 
Let me see. Okay. Oh, this is okay, teacher. It's okay? Yeah, it's okay. All right. How about for you, Eric? It's okay? It's okay. Okay. All right. There you go. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start, Eric. Uh, the topic is the blue lights of Silver Cliff. Look at the picture. What do you think the blue lights are? So today... The town of Silver Cliff, Colorado, has a population of only 100 people. Once, however, it was a prosperous meaning town where thousands came with dreams of finding silver and making their fortune. Okay, I'm gonna continue until Cliff. Late one night in 1880, a group of miners were headed back to their camps after a good time in town. They were still laughing and joking as they approached the graveyard on a hill outside Silver Cliff. Then you can. Then, in number six, the lights were fact. from the helmets yes, of fact. dead miners. Number six. That is We're an opinion. From... It's an opinion. Opinion, opinion, yes, yes, yes. What is the Yeah. Okay. Last one, the lights were from the helmets of the dead miners. An opinion? An opinion, yeah. Okay, let's check it out. Yes, 25 out of 25. Yay. Do we time? Do we what? If, if we still have time. I don't know, teacher. Technically, okay. technically, technically, you still have two minutes, but, well, one minute. Technically, you have one minute, so you finish one minute before. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good job. Any questions? Everything was okay? Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the meaning of... Uh, Earring, I think, is the word. Let me see. It's at the end of the last paragraph. Yeah, eerie. Eerie would mean something like scary. Synonym of scary. Mm, okay. And, and glow? glow? Glow. Glow is another way to say shine. When something is shining, is like the lights. This is glow. Ah, okay. No, okay. Thank you. You're, and, you're welcome. And ether, ether really? I don't know how to pronounce it. Ether really is like something that is realistic. Mm. Okay, so ether really is, we're looking at, um, so it's, is. You, you can't believe it. You can't believe what you're seeing. You can or you can't? No, it, look, it looks real, but you can't believe that it is. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Oh, maybe like um, you can think of, uh, of like some plastic plants. Sometimes you look at like I, I was thinking of... of um, I, I, Roxana, I think. Roxana has some plastic plants behind her. And they look, for me, I asked her about them because they look at the really, they look so realistic. They look so perfect that I couldn't believe that they were real. Mm, okay. And the other word, routine? I think there is routine. Routine. Uh, it's like R O double T I N G. Oh, rotting, rotting, oh. rotting is something that is going bad. Something that is, uh, for example, meat that you leave outside, or the beans when you don't heat the beans, they are rotting. Oh. 
And teacher, yeah. how do you pronounce sure. how do you pronounce the word uh, minero? Minor. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. Any questions? No? Okay. Good. So, the idea is that was to help you just to make sure you understand the reading comprehension. Remember, um, you should be already completed the exam, Unit 3. If not, please try to complete today or tomorrow. That way you don't fall too far behind because already three lessons and if you are only in lesson one or if you are only in lesson two, you are going to feel a lot of pressure if you wait for the last moment, okay? So today or tomorrow, try to finish lesson three because that way if you have a question or if something is not right, we can help you with time. But if you wait to the last moment in the last two days, oh, I don't know what to do in lesson two or lesson three. It is, is very difficult because maybe we are busy or others don't see the message or they are busy completing. So try to make sure that uh, today or tomorrow, if you haven't completed the exam for unit three, you take a time and complete it. Or if you can't complete the time, if you can't complete the exam, at least complete the lessons. You should have completed lessons one, two, and three, okay? So try not to go, the, the idea is to be a little bit every day. If you do a little every day, then you don't feel any pressure. But if you wait and wait and wait, then you feel a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. All right, that's just to remind you because today we are going to have our introduction to unit four, okay? And unit four is talking about movies and looking about the passive. First, do you know what is the passive? I know because movies, I know you know because you watch, especially in the quarantine, everybody watches movies. But what about the passive? Do you have an idea what it is? No? What teacher? I don't understand the, the, the word. Okay. The word is passive. Oh. Uh, like the passive voice and the, the active voice. That's right, Ernesto. And, and what do you remember about the, the difference between active voice and passive voice? I remember that in passive voice, the actions does and the uh, false or it's not on the subject or something like that. Okay, that's good. That's what it is. The difference, the big difference in the passive and active is that in the active voice is the subject. In the passive voice is the object, okay? So for example, um, I don't know, I eat Doritos, all right? I eat Doritos, but in the passive voice is Doritos are eaten by me <laughs> by me that's right maria that's right by me that's the idea so we can have this is the passive i think most of you have seen the passive but sometimes we forget the names or we forget how they are so just to help you remember the main idea of the passive is focus on the object and the structure is always grammatically the verb to be and the past participle the verb to be is what tells you the time. The verb to be tells you if it's present, past, or future. And the past participle tells you the action. So again, with the Doritos. Doritos are eaten by me is in this moment, right? In the past, Doritos were eaten by me, 
okay? In the future, Doritos are going to be eaten by me. So the verb to be is tells you the time for the listener. So the listener knows if you are talking in present, past, or future. And then the past participle is always the obligation to know what is the action. Here we have a small video of a conversation, okay? Let's listen to the conversation and see some of the passive voice in action. How many times does a typical scene need to be shot? It depends, but some... Let me rewind it for a little bit. Someone tells you that making videos or movies is hard work. Would you believe it? Pay attention to Ryan and Nina talk about filmmaking. Movies are hard work. Part A. Listen and practice. Working on movies must be really exciting. Oh, yeah, but it's also very hard work. A one-minute scene in a film can take days to shoot. Really? Why is that? Well, a scene isn't filmed just once. Lots of different shots have to be taken. Only the best ones are used in the final film. So, how many times does a typical scene need to be shot? It depends, but sometimes as many as 20 times. One scene may be shot from five or six different angles. Wow, I didn't realize that. Why don't you come visit the studio? I can show you how things are done. Great, I'd love to. Okay, let's pause in that conversation right there to make sure it's clear. Which words or which parts are the passive? Sorry, Peter, I can't hear you. I said, <clears throat> sorry, I said, which words or which phrases in the conversation are the passive? Which ones could you identify were passive? Uh, in the second paragraph, when it's <laughs> not in the fourth, uh, a scene isn't filmed just once. Very good. That's correct. We have the verb to be and then the past participle. Now, in paragraph one, we have the verb to be, but this is not past participle. This is adjective. Okay. So it's not the passive. The passive is always the verb to be and the verb in past participle. Okay. Good. Do you see any other examples? I don't find it. Hmm, because, and that's the important, is that not always are you going to find or you're going to use the passive. The passive is, the object of the passive is to focus on the object. Many times when we speak or when we use normal conversation, it's active. I do an action, my boss, my mother, someone, someone does an activity is not common to have it in the passive, right? The passive is normally, th is common when you have to report something or when you are giving a message, then it's the passive. But normally it's just the active. Now let's listen to the rest of the conversation. Great, I'd love to. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What else makes working on movies difficult? So, you see, it's not really as glamorous a job as people think. I guess not. For example, the hours are dreadful. So it's not exactly a nine-to-five job? Not at all. Sometimes we shoot a scene right through the night. Or we may start work early in the morning. We have to get everything ready for a shoot, the lighting and everything. And that can take hours. So, if we're going to start filming at 8 in the morning, we usually have to be on the job by 3 or 4 a.m. to get ready. 3 in the morning? That's unbelievable. Oh, no, it's not. Believe me, it happens all the time. Okay. What happened in the second part?
So what happened in the second part of the conversation? It's, hello? Yeah. It says that not uh, everything is good. They have a very dreadful schedule. Sometimes uh, uh, they work uh, at night and uh, or they they have to get early three uh, three o'clock or three three a.m. to to start the shoot at eight because they need to have all the set ready the lights the everything. Okay, very good. Exactly, they're talking about all of the things that have to do with the job and the things that might be done. Now, when they're talking about what she does then it's active. When they're talking about what happens, then it's passive, okay? For example, lights, okay, are set up or uh, scenes are shot several times. These are all passive voice because they're talking about the actions that happen to the movie or to the scenes or to the lights and the passive is what they do, okay? I don't know if, if at least in that part it's okay, the idea? Okay, let's... Yes, teacher. Okay. Just, for example, in this case, mm -hmm. you said that using the verb to be, after the verb to be, we have the past participle, and that is the passive voice. But it's just in this case, because there are some other passive voice with other verbs, right? The verb, no, always, no. yes, but always the verb to, always you need uh, the past participle. Right? It's always the verb to be, but always there's a past participle. The verb to be can be different. It can be am, is, are, was, were, been, being, but always. But it, but it must be the verb to be. It must be the verb to be. Only can, with the verb to be. Only with the verb to be. You cannot use has or had or you cannot use another oh, auxiliary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Only the verb to be. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's clear. Uh, okay. Teacher, I yes? have a question. Mm -hmm. In the conversation, the passive boy could be the best one are used? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Okay. Yes, that would be good. Mm -hmm. Good. Now we're gonna look at how to, we're gonna practice the passive. We won't have time to practice a lot, but we'll start a little bit of practice today and then we'll get a little bit more tomorrow. Here, let's first watch the video so it, we get a better idea of how we use the passive, okay? Okay. Hello, in this lesson we'll study passive to describe process. Get your notebook and get ready to take notes. The passive to describe process is are plus past participle. A scene isn't filmed just once. Only the best shots are used. Modal plus be plus past participle. One scene may be shot from five or six different angles. Lots of different shots have to be taken. Before we begin, let me review the reasons for using the passive. Number one, we don't know who does the action. Number two, the doer of the action is not important. With this in mind, we will use the basic passive. In other words, be plus past participle. Work with me on this first sentence. A scene isn't filmed just once. Only the best shots are used. Did you notice the use of be plus past participles? We may also use passive with models. This is the rule. Model plus be plus past participle. One scene may be shot from five to six different angles. Are you able to describe a short process? You may use first, next, then and after to help you out. All right. The point is that we get an understanding or the basic of what is the passive. Okay. Five to six. And what's the main idea? It doesn't matter 
how you use the passive, but the structure is always the same. It's the verb to be and the past participle. You can use it with a motto. For example, may, could, might, uh, should, but always, always is going to have the verb to be and is going to have the past participle. And what was the main idea? That always we use it to describe what happened to the object, okay? Not what a person did. So it's not Andrea cooked dinner. No, we focus on the food. Dinner, dinner was cooked. And then if you want to say the person, we use by, but it's not an obligation. Does that help you remember teacher, a little bit? Yes, Roxy. Teacher, can you repeat uh, what did you say just right now that uh, is to describe what? What happens? What to the, happens? What happens to the object? Okay, uh -huh, is not to describe what the person does. So you see Morena? No. Thank you. You see her hair? You imagine she goes to the salon and she goes to the, uh, the woman and she says, oh, I need to cut my hair, okay? Now, Morena does not do the action. Morena receives the action. So for this, we focus on her hair. Her hair was cut. It's not important who, but we can say her hair was cut by the stylist, her hair was cut by a barber, her hair was cut uh, at the salon by her friend. But the focus is not in what Marena did, the focus is in what happened to her. That is the passive. We are changing the focus from what Maria did, what Andrea did, to what happened to them. Don't worry, this is only for an introduction because tomorrow we're going to practice. This is to get first the, the idea so it's easier when we have to present tomorrow, when we have to do it, okay? Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Have, okay. Have, a, have a great night and we'll continue again tomorrow. Remember, try okay. to complete up to unit three, up to unit three. Mm, you can do okay, it. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Okay. Good, night. Good, night. Good, night. Good, night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye.